superheroes. So I wore my Superman <laughs> bracelet. Um, wait, can I tell you a secret?
Um, <laughs> Heather will 100% agree with that. Um, before I talk any longer, let's get our scripture for today. Our scripture comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter, to the last chapter of Matthew, starting with verse 16 and ending with verse 20. Okay, can you repeat? Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Thank you. You're welcome. And good morning, by the way. <laughs> good morning. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, if you didn't notice, uh, I do really like superheroes. I really enjoy everything about them. And when somebody calls it our gold rope of truth, I get a little uh, offended. <laughs> uh, but it's okay. It's all right. I, I shouldn't be that way. Um, I, get, I do get a little defensive with my superheroes. I'm sorry. Um, so, with that being said, let, let's get into the Word uh, of God. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most heavenly and gracious God, we are grateful to be here today. We are thankful that we could come together in praise and worship of you. God, we ask that as we go into this time that you help us to focus on you, to focus on your message. God, to hear the lesson that you have brought to us today, but not only just hear it, live it in our hearts. All right, inscribe it in our hearts and let us live it out in the world around us so that others may see what you have taught us. We may bring others to us, to you, to know you. God, we praise you. We love you. Now, Father, may the words of thy servant find acceptance in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. For it's in his name we humbly pray and ask all of these things. Amen. Amen. Many of you may not know this, but a couple weeks ago I was blessed to be a part of the 2019 Junior High Camp Staff at Camp Clark Williamson. Our theme for that week was, you've already, you already know it, it's centered around some very well-known figures in pop culture. Who are these figures, you ask? Well, let me tell you, they have names like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Spider-Man, Iron Man. And we even talked about the Punisher a little. If you don't know who the Punisher is, he's a cool guy. That's right. The figures I'm referring to are none other than some of the most beloved superheroes of our time. From the start of camp all the way up till its end, I had a chance to relive my childhood, telling me about some of my favorite superheroes. So as you can guess, I was a little excited. Just a little. Just a little. You see, I grew up reading comic books and watching cartoons like the Justice League on Saturday mornings. I remember sitting in anticipation as I watched Batman take on the Joker in another head-to-head -head fight through the streets of Gotham City. I remember reading comics featuring Superman as he set out to save Metropolis from another one of Lex Luthor's crazy schemes. I remember feeling joy as I witnessed Batman and Superman defeat their arch enemies as if I were sharing that victory with them. I think that we can all agree that there is something magical and awe-inspiring about a superhero story. So much that the story stays with you for many years to come. It is no wonder that so many kids throughout the years have looked upon these extraordinary superheroes as role models. I mean, let's be real. A superhero is a really good role model. Someone who defends the innocent, fights for truth and justice, and seeks to find the inherent good that lies within all people. However, <clears throat> as good of a role, uh, as good of role models as superheroes can be, they are not perfect. Batman fights crime to exact vengeance for his lost family. Iron Man can be a little self-centered and narcissistic. If you've seen the Avenger movies, you'll know. 
And Spider-Man gives into temptation and puts on the symbiote suit, which is the black Spider-Man suit. And as a result, has no control over the evil things the suit wants him to do. He does gain control over it. That's part of the story. Um, yet despite their imperfections, society has raised them up to be some of the greatest role models in this day and age. Kids aspire. I aspire to be like them. One of our uh, counselor, one, one of my co-counselors, said our co-counselors that week, Brother Paul Earhart Brown, asked a very important question in a sermon that he gave on the last night of camp. He asked, "What is it about superheroes that make them so attractive to us? What attracts us to superheroes?" And the answer to that question is quite simple. You see, we have this habit of getting wrapped up in the amazing powers and gadgets of our favorite superheroes. We love Batman's awesome batarangs and grappling hooks, his, his uh, car, the Batmobile. Love it. I want it. We love Wonder Woman's lasso of truth and her invisible jet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm still stuck on it. We love Superman and his super strength, his x-ray vision, his ability to, to fly. Yet I don't think that these flashy powers and gizmos are the sole reason as to why we uh, are so attracted to superheroes. Now I think it goes so much deeper than that. You know what I think? I think that we love superheroes so much because at their core essence, superheroes are good. Are good. Each of them portrayed for us a piece of the good that lies inherently within our own being. It's not about the flashy gizmos and powers. It's about the desire for good within a world that can be so evil at times. Take away the powers and gadgets and you will still find people who desire to do what is right. Yet as good of role models as they may be, there is always this divide between the superheroes in our comic books and our society today. I strove to be like Superman as a child, blissfully unaware that I could never be Superman. I would never be able to fly or leap over buildings in a single bound or shoot lasers out of my eyes. Sure, I can stop a bullet like Spider-Man, or Spider-Man, like Superman, but I can only do it once. You see, as much as we strive to be like these superheroes, we can never be them. We can never have their powers, yet I know of one hero in all of our lives whose powers is not the ability to fly. It's not laser vision, nor web slinging. No, this hero's power is love. The love of the least of these, the love of the innocent, and even the love of his enemies. A hero we all know very well. A hero is Jesus Christ. To be honest, I think we do the same thing with Jesus that we do with the superheroes. We get caught up in all the miracles, turning water into wine, feeding the 5,000. Yet at the core essence, Jesus is the perfect and true representation of the good found in all of us. What we desire is not the ability to raise people from the dead or walk on water. It's to be the representation of Jesus Christ in this world. And the awesome thing about Jesus is that just like us, or he, 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 he is just like us. He came down to this to this earth, born of flesh and blood, felt the same things that we do. Felt the same pain. He felt hunger and thirst and agony. He felt sorrow, wept over lost loved ones. He has felt fear so intense that his sweat looked like drops of blood. And ultimately, he faced death. Just like we would one day. Jesus, one of the greatest superheroes of all time came to be like us. Now many of you might ask, but Tyler, if we can't be Superman or Wonder Woman, we most definitely can't be Jesus, can we? And you'd be right. We can't be Jesus. Because unlike him, we are imperfect human beings. Yet scripture tells us that right before Jesus gave the great commission in the Gospel of Matthew, he says this, all power, all power on heaven and on earth has been given to me. You see, though we can never be Jesus, Jesus has given us the power to do as he does. 
The power to love the least of these, the power to love the innocent, and the power to love our enemies. Being like Jesus doesn't hinge on our perfection. No, being like Jesus only requires us to take a step into this world in faith and in love of others. It's not about raising people from the dead. It's about speaking words of life into the dying parts of this world. It's not about walking on water. It's about walking alongside the outcast and the excluded in faith and love. You don't have to be perfect to be like Jesus. You just have to have faith. I will still go on in this life loving superheroes, wishing that one day I could be Superman. Maybe. Oh, I'd just like to be able to jump a chair in a single bound. <laughs> can't do that. I can't jump. I don't know. Um, uh, maybe, uh, maybe not that part. Stopping bullets doesn't sound too fun either. Um, but I do know one thing. And said, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has already made it so that I don't have to be perfect to be Jesus. To be like Jesus. I don't have to be perfect to have the power to show others just what Jesus can do in their life. I'm an imperfect, broken human being who has done things he regrets for a lot of his life. Who has said over and over again, you're not worthy of being Christ's representation. But Christ said, no, you may not be worthy, but I love you. Mm -hmm. And you can serve me anyway. Yeah. And so he has given us this call, this great commission to go out with his power that he has given us to show the world what he has done. To show the world what he can do in their life. Amen. And what he has done in our mm -hmm. We have a hero, a superhero, who made it his mission to redeem all of you, mm -hmm. even his enemies. Those who put him on the cross. Those who said, we'd rather see you dead than serve you. His eyes looked up from the cross that day and he said, I'm going to die for you anyway. I'm going to save you anyways. And if that's not a superhero, I don't know what it is. If he's not a superhero, I don't know what it is. Because to me, that is the perfect representation of what a superhero should be. So as you leave this place today, go knowing that there's a superhero, a very real superhero, watching over you watching out for you, walking with you every day of your life. Go knowing the trials and tribulations of this world have no power over him and no power over you. You may face some terrible things, but at the end of the day, your God, your Savior, Jesus Christ, that superhero is going to bring you through. Mm -hmm. There's nothing <laughs> you'll ever fear again. Hold on to that man named Jesus. The greatest superhero of all time. Let us pray. Most heavenly and gracious God, we are grateful for your son Jesus Christ who came to this world, who became flesh and blood, who felt the same pain, the same suffering, who felt joy and laughter in the way that we feel it, who felt sorrow, who felt anxiety, who felt doubt, who felt all of the things that we feel, who knows what it's like to be human, to be tempted, God, we thank you that he, he, he did so well, that he came down to this earth to be like us so that one day we can be like him. And God, we thank you that being like Jesus doesn't mean that we have to be perfect because we know full well that we'll never be perfect. We try and try and try and we'll still mess up. We'll still fall down. There's no doubt about it. You know it, God. That we are imperfect human beings. But through your Son, 
through the power that he has given us, we can still go out and tell the world about you and tell the world about him. To show others that even though we might not be perfect in your eyes, we are. Because your son made it so. Holy God, we thank you. We thank you for all that you do. We thank you for your love, for your mercy and compassion, and for the forgiveness that you give us every day when we fail you another time. God, we pray that you give us the strength to say no to those temptations. That you help us. Try to live a better life, a, a, a life suited for a follower of Christ, suited for a child of God. But also remind us that even when we mess up, even when we do fall, that you're always going to be there. You're always going to be there for forgiveness. Show us mercy. Help us to reach out to those who need to be reached out to. God, let us share the message. Jesus Christ in this world that needs it so desperately. We love you and we praise you. It's in your son's holy precious name that we pray. Amen. Amen.